Time now for sports on 104.7 The Cave. Here's Ned Reynolds. Mike, the intern Ned Reynolds in the studio on a Tuesday morning. So when it comes to gambling and being in sports, kind of a gray area. You can do it. Sometimes you can't. Definitely not in your own sport. And it doesn't matter if it's college or pro. A little bit of a scandal going on in college baseball, isn't there? Yeah, and I'm afraid it's more than just a little bit, too. This is burgeoning into a very deep, ingrained circumstance. It is college. Last, actually, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, University of Alabama baseball team played LSU in a very big conference series, and there were bets made on the game. Well, the central agency that looks over all questionable bets looked at this one in Cincinnati, and that's where this organization's headed, and said, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. And they took those games right off the board, said, ah, cancel all bets. Did an investigation and discovered there were some irregularities, and just a few days later, Alabama fired their baseball coach, Brad Bohannon, out. Okay, go on. Nothing further has been coming from that investigation, except that yesterday, the University of Iowa had their baseball. They played Ohio State over the weekend for their regulars, sat out because they were suspended for rules violations. The rumor is betting, betting on games that they're not allowed to bet on. That was followed a few hours later by Iowa State baseball program. What on earth is going on here? Well, this is that can of worms that many said might happen if you allowed betting and opened up your states to doing that. I disagree. I think it allows the public much more of an identification with the sport that's going on. There's always going to be some little thorn in the side somewhere, but if the feds get this taken care of and find out what the circumstances were, well, you're going to see some very distinct punishment. Um, I know that the the argument for and against gambling in your states, but I think it's it's actually, and I've seen it too, because I'm you know I work in a, and I know a lot of different professionals, a lot of young guys that are in their early to mid twenties <clears throat> that have been growing up with the addition of gambling in their life, and so I see a lot of young guys that are just you know doing a lot more gambling than guys my age because it wasn't. It wasn't like it was looked down upon, but there was such a gray area where you could, where you could. Now it's so easily accessible for everyone. It's been going on, Mike, forever. Well, and ever, I know. But now you're talking about it because you're hearing more yeah, about it. Yeah. Oh, no. Heck, how many times have we gone on this show and I've talked oh, about all the, the time. point spreads? Hey, the Chiefs are a five point favorite. Five points for what? Well, for the gamblers. That's what it's about, and that's why you do these sorts of things. That part of it is legal, not in this state. You can't do it, and Missouri hasn't approved it yet. Kansas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, eight places like that, Illinois, you can do that. And that's where some of the some of the off track, so to speak, I don't mean that in a horse racing sense, but off event uh, gambling can be done. Uh, I think it eventually will come into Missouri, but it's not here yet. I'll but. tell you right now, it's not just college baseball. I guarantee you there's college athletes all across the country that are doing it. That's so. where Iowa State was yeah, involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's just going to get worse. We'll see, though. Hopefully uh, they can figure it out. But yeah, not looking too good. Speaking of not looking too good, the uh, catastrophic situation at Churchill Down has definitely cast a shadow on the uh, Preakness coming up, hasn't it? It has. Seven thoroughbreds, of course, died over the past week at Churchill Downs. Several of them were, of course, track training fractures and so forth and so on. But there were some that were just totally unexplained, in which the horse at the end of the race asked away. And you can't have that sort of thing without some kind of an investigation going on. Well, right now there are no answers other than the fact that Forte, who had been the favorite and then was scratched, will not be eligible to run in the Preakness. And that's coming up in two weeks. Why won't that horse be eligible? Is it because he was scratched? Well, yes, in a sense. When you're scratched at Kentucky Derby, the Kentucky Racing Commission says you have 14 days on that list. It's automatic. You're placed on that list, so any disease or whatever the situation might be investigated and healing takes place. Well, the Preakness occurs within that 14-day period. So Forte is out of it, but Mage, that won the Kentucky Derby, right now, now the owner hasn't said that that horse is going to run, but I'm sure it will. And the Freakness Stakes is a smaller field than Kentucky Derby. So uh, we'll, we'll see what happens, but it is coming up in a couple weeks. And yes, that cloud remains very much intact. And we'll be watching what happens <laughs> at that race. Um, so let's talk about some playoffs, uh, more specifically hockey. 
Are we getting closer to a Kraken Panther final? <laughs> Maybe. There was only <laughs> one match last night, and that was Las Vegas against Edmonton and the Las Vegas Golden Knights on the road or the on the foreign ice had defeated Edmonton, and now Las Vegas has a two games to one lead. More series coming up tonight. Be interesting to see if uh, the Knights actually go too, because I was in Las Vegas and met that whole team. They came through where we were staying at and like did the nice little uh, fan tour. We went walked outside. It's all these Knights fans. Like, what are these hockey guys doing down here? This, this, we're nowhere near the stadium. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a bus pulls up, and all these guys get out with hockey sticks. I was like, oh, I'm sticking around for this. So yesterday, I read an article basically saying that a lot of people or maybe people in the organization are blaming some of the woes the St. Louis Cardinals are going through on the fact that Yadier Molina is no longer with the team. You can't put this all on uh, Contreras, man. That's not that's not fair. It is not fair, but there is probably some credence to what they're saying. You don't lose a, a two-decade all-star veteran who's been in control of that team. You don't lose him and not feel it. And I think probably that has been of some effect. And here's Wilson Contreras coming in and <laughs> your, your expectations from the fans, which is always Mount Everest and hopes, is not being is not panning out. And now the Cardinals front office has panicked a little bit and made him a DH and he's not catching, at least for the foreseeable future. And that's why they're paying him to be a catcher. Well, anyway, last night at Wrigley Field, which is from whence he came, and we'll throw the meteorology into this very quickly. Watching the game, and here down here, we're 80, 81 degrees, 82. It's about 40 in Chicago. And the fans are there bundled up and you can see the breath blowing out. And oh boy, it was not, not pretty. Anyway, Cardinals get a win, 3-1. And who drives in two of the three runs? Wilson Contreras. And does he make any gestures to the fans? He says, yeah, keep booing me. Come on, I love it, and all that sort of thing. He was the DH last night. All right, Cardinals do get a win. That's two straight wins now. Miles Michaelis strikes out seven in four and the third innings. And then ran out of gas. And they bring in the relief court. Chicago Cubs are about a 500 team, and they're a little bit below that right now. They're not a... Not a great team at all. I don't even recognize some of the names of the players on that. This is not the Cubs of the past. But they were unable to unable to muster any kind of rally. And the Cardinals make it two in a row. They are now 12 games under the 500 mark, they being the Cardinals. Royals, how about this? M.J. Melendez, who is one of the young, maybe potential superstars on that ball club, that four RBIs last night. And the Royals beat the Chicago White Sox 12 to 5. Zach Greinke gets the victory. Helps when your team's up by a lot of runs for the pitcher. I think Greinke will take that any day. But the Royals now have two wins in a row. What is this? Missouri's coming back. We got double digits for the Royals now, which I love to hear. All right, let's talk about college baseball again. Uh, more specifically, the baseball Bears. How many games before the conference tournament? Well, they have two series before that. They go to Southern Illinois this weekend, and then Indiana State comes here to close out the regular season. The conference tournament is being played at Indiana State. So <laughs> after their final game of that uh, uh, three-game series, which is two weekends from now, they the teams pack up and all get on the bus and head over to Terre Haute for the start of that competition. All right, the Bears have one non-conference game remaining, and that is tonight at Hammonds Field. Going to take on Lindenwood. This is pretty interesting. Lindenwood heretofore had been at first an NAIA school and then an NCAA Division II school. Now they are D1. Now they're a transitionary D1. What does that mean? Well, it means that they're not eligible for postseason play for another three years. That's the transitionary period. But Lindenwood is in the Ohio Valley Conference. They're playing a Division I schedule, and they're here for a 6:30 game. Be a nice little test for the Bears against an in-state opponent. They don't play very many in-state opponents, Mizzou and St. Louis University. And I don't think their games with St. Louis University were uh, ever played this year because of weather. But be that as it may, and Southeast. I want to get the Southeast Missouri State Ball Club there in there as well. But indeed, we have competition going on tonight. 6.30 start, Hammonds Field, Bears, and Lindenwood. Last but not least, what's going on in those NBA playoffs? Miami Heat have really flexed their muscle. They knocked off the New York Knicks last night, and the Miami Heat now lead that series three games to one. Miami is a very good basketball team. The Knicks are too, but they're not in the same ballpark. And then in an absolute dandy finish, the Los Angeles Lakers clipped Flipped, and I mean just got by the Golden State Warriors 104 to 101 
and Los Angeles. The Lakers, who are the lowest-seeded uh, team in this competition, uh, lead that series three games to one. That's how you win LeBron and Anthony uh, Davis and those people start playing basketball. The Lakers are a pretty good team, but without those two in there, they aren't anything at all. We'll see what happens. We will see what happens, my guy. You have a great Tuesday, Ned, and I will see you on Wednesday.